Ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham, this is X-Plane 11, and we're in Northern Arizona, we're at uh, Sedona Airport today. And you might be wondering why we're looking at a model of a Bell 429 helicopter, rather than the normal uh, airliner sims you'd expect to see on this channel. Well, it's quite simple. This is a freeware model. I found it completely uh, by accident a few weeks ago. And since installing it, I haven't been able to stop flying it. It's really, really enjoyable. I've always uh, enjoyed trying to fly helicopters in flight sims, but it's really incredibly difficult. This is the first helicopter I've really spent any time with whatsoever. I've got the uh, DCS Huey, the MI-8 and the Black Shark. Uh, and the Black Shark's easy enough once you get used to it, but the Huey is absolutely, uh, I find it near impossible to fly. Um, I think it's almost trying to be slightly too realistic in how it handles, because for people with desktop joysticks and basic uh, consumer rudder pedals, it's really quite difficult. Not so this model, I've had a lot of fun flying it. It's got uh, good stability systems, good automation, and uh, the autopilot's pretty good on it as well. I've only ever found videos on YouTube from... Uh, dedicated helicopter channels with it. So I thought, given it's such a good freeware model and I've had a lot of fun with it, I'd spend 15-20 minutes just showing it. And if you fly airliners, you might want to check this out because it's something just a little bit different. It's dead easy to start the thing up as well and it's dead easy to fly once you've uh, had a little bit of practice with it. We'll come into the uh, cockpit, turn the battery switch on, come down to the centre panel, we'll switch on the position light, the anti-collision light, on the uh, overhead to make sure the rotor brake is selected off. We'll turn both of the uh, throttles to the idle detent here. So wind them forwards and then back a little bit to then the idle position. Come up here, switch both the engine switches to run and then click the start switch to start number one. You'll see the uh, green arrow start the number one engine. Once that spools up, the switch will return back to the center position and you can start number two. There we go, one's running, so starting two. Once the second engine starts, we'll put the electrical generators on, that'll get us the other display running. There we go, engine's both running. Generator one on, generator two on. Uh, these switches, I don't think they're implemented at the moment, but we will put the pitot heat on. And uh, there's a few other switches still to go as well. Autopilot 1 and 2 are the most important ones. That gets us the stability system, uh, which is key to flying the thing. Notice we've still got the RPM indication. That's because it's at a low idle. And this is the bit that I find slightly tricky. Uh, there seems to be slight uh, differences every time you start it up. So if I take the uh, number 1 engine and bring the RPM up, it'll increase here. And it'll start to bring the rotor up as well. Take the number two, increase that. And you see how the number one drops back. I don't really know why it does that. It's not, um, there's not much documentation for it. I guess if I knew more about helicopter, helicopters, I'd be able to tell you why that happens. So it's indicating all's well here. Both of the engines coming together, and that's us uh, in good shape. We'll come down here, we'll flick the strobes, the landing lights to pulse, put the transponder on, and then we'll lift into the hover. The field of view is uh, really quite uh, difficult in a desktop monitor to fly a helicopter. I've got another viewpoint here just set back a little bit so I can see more of the landing area. But you might want to try it with a slightly wider field of view. That might help as well. As it's sitting on the ground, the rotor disc is pointing forwards, so what I've got to do is lift it onto the, uh, lift the nose slightly before we lift into the hover. So I'll hold a little bit of aft stick. Bring it up to around about 5 degrees nose up, and then lift smoothly to the hover. Helicopters seem to hover taxi at really quite low altitudes, so I guess that's to do with the, um, keep out zone where you can't auto rotate safely um, but in the sim it's again the visual cues make that quite difficult so anything up to 20 or 30 feet seems to be acceptable and remember it doesn't go where the nose is pointing it goes where the rotor disc is pointing so I can bring it onto the center line just by leaning slightly to the left and then back to the right to stop the motion when you're starting to hover taxi 
the key seems to be not to go too fast. Don't get into translational lift because then you've got a lot of power changes. Just three or four uh, knots is perfect. I'll come to the whole chart line. Just an excuse for a pedal turn to the right. Make sure there's nobody on approach. And remembering, try and stop the motion as well. I'm not very good at this, as I said. And with that, we'll uh, line up on the runway. And to take off, rather than increasing the power, what I'm going to do is lower the nose and accelerate it into translational lift. I'll keep the aircraft at low altitude as the speed increases. There we go. So I'll keep putting the nose down. And once we get to about uh, 30 to 40 knots, start to increase the back pressure. Just bring the nose up to around about that 5 degree mark and we should climb away quite happily. I can put a little bit more power on if I want. The standard X-Plane trim controls work, so use the uh, yaw trim function to centralise the ball. And pitch and roll trim as before. Definitely read the manual uh, that comes with this because it tells you a little bit about how to set it up. The great thing is the stability can be moved into a mode called uh, Attitude as well. I've got a joystick binding for this down here. So we get it to maybe, let's say, 10 degree angle of bank, 5 degree nose up, click it into Attitude and it'll hold that exactly. I've still got control of the uh, collective, so I can change the uh, rate of climb, but it's holding the pitch and roll quite happily. There's another button bound called Force Trim Release. It's on my trigger on the joystick, so I push and hold that. I can then set another Attitude such as 20 degrees, release the force trim, and it will hold that for me. So, for longer cross-country flights, you've got that stability mode, uh, the attitude mode hold, and uh, for the shorter part and the manoeuvring, you've got the stability. It really makes it quite easy. It's got another feature, it's the autopilot down here. Click it into vertical speed and speed, and then look for the control bindings called beep trim. Look at the airspeed at the moment, I can Increase that to 80, and I can change the rate of climb down to 500 feet a minute. And using the beep trim roll, which is a keystroke for me, I can set it into a turn. And that's a kind of fully stabilized automatic flight. And that's what makes it really quite enjoyable. Um, you've got a helicopter you can have fun with around the airport, and you can use it for cross-country trips. And once you get the thing flying, it's, it's slightly different from an aeroplane, but it's still, just, um, it's still just a flying machine to enjoy. You get great views um, in the sim. But by far the most important thing is on the outside, it's beautifully modelled. Absolutely stunning. There's um, a number of different liveries. I think there's about uh, 30 different liveries for it. And they all come with different exterior features as well. You see spotlights or radar noses. Some have got the cable cutters. Some have got uh, bubble windows or baskets for ski rescue, that sort of thing. There's really a lot of variety in it. And you see it's holding its altitude uh, quite happily along here at uh, 80 knots. There's Sedona Airport over there. So what I'll do is I'll click the uh, autopilot off and then I'll click the attitude back to stability. And we'll fly it around and see if we can land it. As I said, I don't, um, I don't have any real-world helicopter experience to draw on, so it, uh, it doesn't really fit with the theme of reflected reality simulations. But um, quite simply, it's, it's a freeware model that's um, been given the, to the community for free. I thought I'd uh, share it a little bit with people that uh, don't often or may not often see the helicopter content. The thing that I've um, found trying to learn how to fly helicopters in the sim is there's a lot of very detailed material online um, and it's, it's very uh, different from how you might see helicopters being flown in the movies. You know, you watch the old war movies, the Vietnam movies, and you can see uh, Hughes been thrown around the sky and flying into hot landing zones, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, I'm at the level of a sim PPL helicopter pilot who's uh, simply 
trying their hardest to keep the thing upright and uh, not crash half the time. But I like it. I've flown into Sedona once in a Piper Archer. Um, we had to come up very early in the morning because once it gets warm up here in the uh, even in, in the early autumn, it's quite limiting in performance. It's 5,000 feet above sea level, but it's stunning, absolutely beautiful part of the world. So remembering that I set the uh, airspeed with the pitch attitude and the rate of descent with the collective. And the thing about a helicopter is that we talk about primary and secondary effects of controls with uh, airplanes. Helicopters, every single movement you make on the control seems to have an effect that you didn't want somewhere else. So you're constantly flying it. And that's what the stability system does. Um, obviously in a real helicopter, the stability makes it less tiring to fly. Uh, in this model, it actually makes it possible to fly it. Um, I've had no luck with uh, any of the default helicopters. Um, but I'd really like your input on it. If you like, um, if you've got this model, you like flying it, or you've got any of the other X-plane helicopters that you think are pretty good, then please let me know in the comments. So the windsock uh, is down there. That would be the uh, taxiway that we're looking for. I'm just going to set the pitch attitude for the speed and set the collective for the rate of descent. What I want to avoid doing is descending too steeply at a low airspeed. That would be very bad news in a helicopter. So I'm looking for um, certainly no less than about uh, 50 knots until we start to reduce the sink rate. The idea being is I'll be in a hover just uh, beside the taxiway that I want to vacate over. And just looking at the position of the taxiway on the, the screen, you know, where we're aiming for, what's the position on the windscreen, what's the aspect towards it. If it's moving uh, up the screen, then I'm maybe descending a little bit too quickly. If it's moving down the screen, I'm not descending quickly enough. 500, 400. Obviously, the radar calls there are a little bit odd because you're coming over the hill at Sedona. We're not descending as quickly as those audio calls would make, uh, make you believe. So it's about 45 knots and a sensible sink rate. And as we slow down, um, once we get out of translational lift, uh, it needs a lot of collective input quite quickly to stop it sinking. And as you put the collective in, you need pedal as well. There's that power coming up. I kind of use 10 as the, the absolute lowest I want to be, because then, uh, you know, the, looking at the picture out the window, it's quite difficult to judge where you are uh, when you're really low down. So in the hover, quick check outside, kind of sensible altitude there. And then we'll try and vacate and we'll try and park the thing. As I mentioned, the rudder pedals I've got are really quite old. They're not the smoothest uh, control input in the world. The, you get a little glitch in it every so often. I think you saw that on the left turn there. But it's good enough. The stability on the, on the model really helps out. Ten. So let's see if I can get it pointing the right way without wiping out any of these little cabins here. backwards a little bit, it's not what we want. Let's see if we can put it down somewhere close to the middle. Let's see how we did. Well, that's okay, I'm quite happy with that. To shut it down, it's um, Again, they're the uh, opposite from what we've just done previously. So we'll turn the landing light off, first of all. 
can probably turn the generators, uh, leave the generators just now in fact, bring the engines down to idle. Rotor starts to spin down. Make sure the transponder is uh, set back to standby. Make sure the strobes are off because we're not flying anymore. Click the generators off. Switch the uh, engines to off and fuel cut off. Probably leave the uh, anti-collision light on and the uh, position light on as it slows down. Because obviously the engines have shut down, the rotor is still spinning away. I think once the rotor is below 40%, uh, we can use the rotor brake as well. But that's it uh, spinning down quite happily. And that's the freeware model of the Bell 429. It uses the uh, plug-in from one of the payware uh, helicopter models. And it's, it's really, it, it's spectacularly easy to fly in the cruise. Um, it's just a little bit more challenging around the, air, uh, around the airfield. But I'm having a lot of fun with it. Please let me know in the video comments if, um, if you enjoy flying helicopters, if you'd like to see any more content with this. Um, as I said, it's not what the channel uh, initially set out to do, but sometimes it's fun just to do something a little bit different. Thanks very much for listening, and happy flying.